what is up YouTube hope everyone's been doing well um, sorry for the very late video I know a lot of you have been wondering where I've been and to be honest things have gotten a bit hectic with work and family and had a bit of a pothole as we'd call in SA uh, got a new colony in and within three days the colony basically died dream species of mine hopefully I can get it again but yeah hit pretty hard anyway people I know it's winter time in South Africa right now and I know a lot of us is wondering what to do how to treat your ants and with a nest and heating and diet and I thought I'd bring out this video to more or less explain what to do what to expect so I'll start off with uh, there are hibernations that ants go through and um, I'll briefly touch on what most of European countries and American ants go through and things and such. They go through a full-blown hibernation. So meaning ants have almost no activity, little to none, almost no feeding, no, diet is basically non-existent and the ants sleep as you would expect a little grizzly bear to do. So not a lot to touch on there. But in South Africa and I'm sure the lower southern continent countries and whatnot, um, we go through what they call a diapause. So that basically means that our species of ants don't actually go into a full hibernation. They still move, they still consume, they still move around the nest and construct and whatnot, but uh, basically everything is toned down quite drastically. Diapause basically means that the ant will go through a brief moment from half an hour to a little bit longer of not moving at all. Some would think the ants are sick, things like that, but the ants are basically in a diapause state. So because of activity being lowered drastically, diet changes completely. They also consume more or less what the things that they would previously in summer and spring, but on a much smaller scale. So it is very important to still be feeding your ants or your colonies. It's still important to have the sugars in there, the waters, the proteins, be it bugs or whatever. So in that regard, you cannot start feeding your ants, but whereas previously you were feeding ants maybe once every day every two days this is going to go down to like maybe once a week especially in the middle of winter you'll be surprised um, how this might help is uh, pick something especially protein that won't dry out within the first few days i'm going to use a small example here for us south africans but um, biltong is a very good example of something that could stay in the outworld for quite a few days and it won't go rotten etc now that's what brings us to the next very important topic not all ant colonies eat the same you might even have the same species as a friend but depending on habitat conditions depending on temperature of the nest depending on sugars depending on waters uh, diet will change for example uh, the drop tail colony that I have um, there's three or four of us that have drop tails on the South African group and it's funny how each one will prefer different foods some might like the same foods for example honey but there might be a protein source that for example uh, my colony might prefer more than my friends so it's very important to gauge now how your colonies react to proteins and sugar sources, things like that. It's an ever adapting. Even if you've got more than one type of species. So if you've got drop tails, you've got some caponotas, you've got some yopranera, each one is different and it's very important to treat as such. That brings us to the next topic, heating. Heating is probably going to be one of the most important things to keep your colonies alive and through the winter that they still keep up the numbers, the workers don't start dying off. And um, heating 
is basically broken down into three things that you can do. Um, number one is a warm room. Now it's, that's probably the easiest that you can do because a warm room can basically help you in the best way. It's not direct heating, it's not too extreme heating, it's more of a constant condition that ants prefer. So now if you've got a room in your house or for example I've got mine in my garage because my garage is exposed to a lot of sunlight, it's actually the hottest room in my house. So that's perfect for me now in winter time. I don't have to stress too much about the ants and if you do have a warm room in your house <laughs> of course uh, with your parents and your spouse if they allow it um, try and keep them in that room the next step if you do not really have that or you live in a very cold condition climate or area um, you get what you call a heating pad now a heating pad as the name would describe is basically a little pad that is heated most of them come with heat control so you can set the temperature that you want at they will be a bit pricey depending on where you can get them um, I see in South Africa you can look on a place like take a lot go to your nearest pet store I know that will the pet store will definitely have that will lead now to the third one and it's probably not the most ideal uh, but there's a way around it is a heat cable so a heat cable is a lot more direct heat as not as a heat pad where you can change uh, excuse me <laughs> um, change the temperature and whatnot so it's one constant current because of resistance in the wire it heats up now you'll notice in the videos I have a heat cable because unfortunately I started panicking with I had that species that died off and I try to get something as quick as possible and the heat cable is anything I could but for example use mine as example now I have my colonies in the garage that averages a temperature of about 21 to 22 degrees ambient temperature and on the cold nights or cold days I will now plug in the heat cable and that will now basically heat it up that little bit um, that it is cold during the night or during the day or whatever now, this is very important people that you the last, the first few days, you're very attentive to your colonies. You can overheat your colonies nests. So in that regard, it's very important to have a heat gradient. So what that means is the nest or the test tube that you have or the massive nest that you've got. You don't want the whole nest to be temperature excuse me to be the same temperature as everywhere so basically you want to have a heat gradient that the one side of the nest is warmer than the other in that way the ants can gauge what they do need how hot do they need it and when do they need it this allows you to basically see also do your ants ants <laughs> do your ants like the heat or not so for example, you would remember my Meronopolis colony that I have. They sort of don't like heat. So I'll only put a little corner of the little uh, nest on a heat cable. Or even just the outworld. And they seem to actually prefer that because when I did have it more on the uh, heat cable, more on the nest, they seem to have shied away from it and actually moved into the test tube which was not as warm. So gauge your colonies like that, see them the first few days, and then adjust accordingly. Very important in winter to do this, especially when working with heat cables or heat mats. You don't want to cook your ants. Now, for the smaller colonies that you guys do have a test tube setup, or a tubs and tube setup, or a small little nest for macarium or something, smaller is better. For the ants um, smaller space in the nest because what happens is ants that rub against one another they basically cause friction and that helps them heat themselves up this helps to keep a more of a constant temperature in the nest and it basically this is how ants live in nature now smaller is better in the sense that the ants in nature 
will know not to make so much more bigger space in the nest. So we might think now like human beings are not bigger, better, give them as much space as they need. That's not what ants need. Smaller is always better. Even with a test tube. Smaller is always better. So that brings us to the conclusion of the video guys. Uh, a little brief expect expectation that you can have is again, don't panic. If you've done all of this, you've got your diet, you've got your heating, you're sure that your ants are not overcooking. If you do notice that your colonies are barely eating, that's just now basically now nature taking its course. They are still alive. Don't panic yet. And um, I'd give it a few days. So if you see your colony hasn't ate in a while, leave it a bit. Leave it about two, four days or so. Maybe give another drop of honey after that. Judge it like that. If you see that they go immediately for the honey, you know that, okay, they're cool. All right, guys, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, leave a thumbs up, subscribe, appreciate it. Um, he has a little video, a little sneak peek of how aggressive drop tails are. Now, in the video, you'll notice the camera is over the out world, and I blow into the out world with much more breath, and you see how they freak out. If any of you want to buy the, of these ant formicariums, the outworlds, the nests, um, visit the Ant South Africa website. Speak to Andrew. He'll hook you guys up. Appreciate it, guys. Enjoy. Cheers.